Hey y'all, and welcome to Tech Fact Friday. Did you know that as of last year, 73% of US adults reported playing video games on at least one platform? In fact, playing video games ranks number seven out of 10 most popular American pastimes, with the PlayStation 2 being the most popular gaming console, having sold 159 million. Today, we're going to take a look at the invention of this popular activity and its origin story might be contradictory to what you learned at your local pub's trivia night. You may have heard that Pong was the first video game invented, but in reality, that award could be granted to two different earlier inventions, depending on how you want to define the term video game. The first contestant is called the Nimitron, shown at the World Fair in 1939. This phone booth looking machine was programmed to play the game Nim. NIM is a game that's played between two people who alternate removing objects from stacks of varying size. On their turn, the person has to remove at least one object and only from one stack per turn. They can also remove as many as they want as long as it's all from the same stack. The winner is the person who makes the last move, eliminating all of the remaining stacked objects. Usually, this game is played with stacks of coins. The Nimitron used columns of light bulbs to indicate the stacks, and the machine and player would take turns extinguishing the lights until all were turned off. The reason why it's a coin toss as to whether this could be considered a video game or not is because there's no screen to view, just lights to guide the play. Regardless, one funny fact about the Nimitron is that the programmers had to deliberately slow it down after fairgoers became frustrated with how quickly the machine calculated its move. It also won 90% of the matches played. The next earliest video game invention after the Nimitron came in 1958 and was called Tennis for Two. Between the years of 1951 and 1968, a man by the name of William Higginbotham worked as the head of the Brookhaven National Laboratory. The laboratory allowed visitors but William wanted to make these tours more interesting for the average person. Using an analog computer with a cathode ray tube display, the same type of equipment used in X-ray tubes and radars, William manipulated the program that was already configured to display object curves to reflect a tennis game, including a bouncing ball. The graphics were simple, with only a line to indicate the ground, and a second line to indicate the net, and a dot for the ball. The screen was a minuscule five inches. Despite this, visitors stood in long lines to play tennis for two. After a year on display, the screen was enlarged and the program modified so players could alter the gravity in the game and choose to play tennis on different planets. William never patented the game since his focus was on nuclear arms control, not video game production, and was quoted saying, it never occurred to me that I was doing anything very exciting. The long line of people, I thought, was not because this was so great, but because all the rest of the things were so dull. This was likely later the inspiration for Pong. But more importantly, it should be a lesson to us all to never sell yourself or your creations short. That's all we have time for today. We only just scratched the surface of video games, so keep an eye out in the future for a deeper dive into the history of video games. Remember to share, like, and follow for more content like this. Until next time, it's time for an upgrade, a technical upgrade.